Survivor All-Stars, the first returning player season of Survivor, premiered on February 1st, 2004, premiering after Super Bowl 38. 18 of Survivor's most iconic players from the first seven seasons were brought back for a second time to compete against the best of the best. And seriously, this truly was an all-star cast. I mean, just look at all these freaking names. Hatch, Rudy, Colby, Ethan, Kathy, Rob C, Rupert. Just amazing that Survivor was able to get pretty much all their big names to come back and play again all together. I think the only true what the F picks here were Amber and Jenna Lewis, as Survivor originally wanted Colleen and Elizabeth over them. And I think it's safe to say that these alternates would change the course of this season and Survivor history forever. The tribes are divided up into teams of three for the first time, and it's clear that the winners were the outsiders on Saboga and Mogamogo, while Rob Z was the massive target on Shapira, as he was considered the best to never win at that point. The person most vocal about targeting the winners is Jenna, and when I say vocal, I mean it. Tonight, I think it's important we take out the two winners first. I don't want to see them again another million dollars. I just want to get rid of them at the beginning. You're a very what? strong member of the tribes, but you're also a winner, Ethan. I know, that's the, that's a, that's it's a your detriment. best advantage. No, it's not. It's not. We see a couple alliances form early on in episode 1, as the unlikely pair of Rudy and Rupert form an alliance, who are arguably the biggest fan favorites at that point in Survivor. And on Shapira, we see Amber and Rob Mariano start to bond. Oh man, hindsight is a beautiful thing. So Bogo would end up losing the immunity challenge, sending them to the first tribal council of Survivor All-Stars. With Ethan and Tina obviously being in trouble for being past winners, the tribe ultimately chooses to go with Tina, as she was the weaker of the two. Ethan and Tina try to turn the vote around onto Jenna, to break up her and Jerry leaving Rupert and Rudy as the swing votes. But at Tribal, the four non-winners band together to vote out Tina in a 4-2 vote. Tina, the tribe has spoken. Despite winning the reward challenge of episode 2, Sabogo would once again lose immunity, sending them to their second straight tribal council. Rudy's ankle had recently gotten injured, and being that he was now 75 years old, it was hard for the tribe to look past his potential weakness. But Rupert made it clear that he was not voting for his ally, and pleaded for the girls to send home Ethan. However, at tribal council, in the first true sad vote off in Survivor, Jerry and Jenna reluctantly spare Ethan for future challenges, sending home Rudy in a 3-2 vote. Rudy, the tribe has spoken. We begin episode 3 with Amazon winner Jenna Maraska thinking about her mom as her mom was fighting cancer back at home, making Jenna question if she really should be out here. The reward challenge basically took up this entire episode, but this was the best reward possible for that to happen as the tribes had to build a tribe home to be judged. Boston Rob really rised as leader here for Shapira as he had the most experience with this given that he was a construction worker. We then saw tensions brew at both Saboga and Mogamogo as Jerry and Rupert got into it on Saboga, while the Mogo Mogo men and women had disagreements over how to build the home. In the end, Rob's leadership and the general cohesiveness on Shapira won them reward. After the challenge though, Jenna couldn't take it anymore, and when the tribes arrived for the immunity challenge, she made the announcement that she was leaving to be with her ailing mother. I love this game so much, but my priority is my family. And it just doesn't make any sense for me to be here anymore. So I need to take myself out of the game. Fair enough. Let's bring in a boat. Episode 4 begins with the first signs of romance between Rob and Amber. On Mogamogo, Mogo, Richard continued to be the provider he was in Borneo, but his love for being nude still rubbed some people the wrong way. Shapira won the reward challenge, and along with essentials, they also won a clue to one of the keys that would give the tribe more rise, to which they found. Despite the early success of Shapira, their dominance would end at the immunity challenge, sending them to their first tribal council. Rob C attempted to play this as well as he possibly could, and offered up Alicia as an easy vote for the tribe. But at Tribal Council, Shapira simply could not overlook Rob's threat level, sending home the future podcaster in a unanimous 5-1 vote. Rob, the tribe has spoken. Episode 5 starts with the tribes receiving bamboo, 
and they would use that bamboo to build a raft for the upcoming reward challenge. And at the challenge, Sabogo comes in last place, which meant they were at the mercy of Shapira and Mogamogo, as the twist of this reward was that the losing team would be dissolved into the two winning teams. Ethan and Jerry would end up joining Mogamogo, while Jen and Rupert would join Shapira. Shapira and Mogamogo bonded with their new members, but Ethan knew he was still a massive target, and the only person with a bigger target was Rich. However, Rich was the clear provider for the tribe, so Ethan tried to one-up Rich by catching fish himself, much to the dismay of Hatch. Shapira would win the first challenge as new tribes, sending Mogo Mogo to their first tribal council. We unfortunately had a very ugly moment in this challenge between Rich and Sue, which would play a massive role in the following episode. Good job. Yeah, Guys, come on. Nobody cares about that stuff. Yeah, we don't, Richard. With the two winners of Ethan and Rich being on the chopping block, the target is initially Ethan for being an original Saboga. However, due to Ethan being a better asset for the challenges and far more trustworthy than Rich, Colby and Lex agree to take out Rich over Ethan. But when Colby approaches the girls about the new plan, they feel as though Colby is playing too hard too fast and approach Rich with a plan to blindside Colby. This made Kathy the swing vote, as it was more so Sheehan and Jerry that wanted Colby out as opposed to her. But at Tribal Council, Kathy and even Jerry and Sheehan side with the guys, voting out the first ever Survivor winner, Richard Hatch. Fifth person voted out of Survivor All-Stars. Rich. I've been bamboozled! <laughs> Rich, the tribe has spoken. Food. Tensions arise even more between Colby and Sheehan after he made comments at the previous tribal council, calling her passive. On Shapira, Robin and Amber decide to make an alliance with the former Saboga and Rupert and Jenna, to which they accept. After the incident at the last immunity challenge, Sue's head is totally out of the game, as she feels completely violated by Rich's actions. And when the tribes come in for the reward challenge, Sue simply can't take it anymore and quits the game. I was violated, humiliated, dehumanized, and totally spent, Jeff. It wasn't sorta, of Jeff, because you're his back was to you, Jeff. That's all I'm saying. And I'm spent and I'm done with this game. As in, you want out of the game? I'm done. I'm walking away. Man, this is like the third extremely depressing episode of the season, and we're not even halfway done. Anyway, episode 7 begins with Jerry and Rupert acting in polar opposite ways, as while Jerry annoyed Mogo Mogo with her complaining, Rupert got Shapira motivated, heading into the immunity challenge. In a close battle between the two tribes, Rupert's speech paid off, as Shapira won their second straight immunity. Kathy was kidnapped by Shapira after the challenge, meaning the Mogo Mogo tribe would consist of five people heading into tribal. Ethan felt he cost the tribe the challenge, and being that he was an outsider and former winner, it seemed extremely unlikely that Ethan would survive this tribal. Out of desperation, Ethan campaigned to Colby and Lex to take out Jerry. Colby agrees to this, but Lex has his own plan, as he wanted to blindside Colby, feeling this would be the perfect time to take him out before the merge. As remember, Colby was the record holder at the time for individual immunity wins. Lex approaches Jerry and Sheehan about this plan, and while Jerry happily agrees to this, Sheehan is unsure of what to do, as even though she had been at odds with Colby all game, Jerry was already starting to annoy the crap out of her. In the end, Sheehan sides with Lex and Jerry, blindsiding Colby in a 3-2 vote. Colby, Trump has spoken. Episode 8 begins with the tribes having to choose an ambassador to go to the other tribe's camp. Kathy was an easy choice for Mogamogo, as she was Liddy just with Shapira the previous night, while Jenna was chosen for Shapira. The two ladies got to pick three items from the opposing tribe, and if their tribe won the reward, they would get to keep those items. Shapira won reward, taking away Mogamogo's luxuries. Then, Robin and Amber went full on showmance as they shared their first kiss. I can vent to him, complain to him about anything, and he won't hold it against me. The season of Boston Rob continued as he led Shapira to their third straight immunity win. Despite his incredibly hard fight throughout the season and being real life friends with Lex, Mogo Mogo 2.0 simply couldn't let a winner get to the merge and Ethan, the final winner, was voted out of All-Stars in a unanimous vote. Ethan, the tribe has spoken. Have fun, play hard, don't let the bed bugs bite. Episode 9 is a recap episode, which brings us to the infamous final 10 round of Survivor All-Stars. We start off with the tribes thinking they were merging, when in fact, there would be another tribe swap. And it just so happens that the teams were exactly the same, albeit different tribes, with Amber being the only person to not be with their original tribe. And it just so happened that Amber was last in line too. 
Hmm, that's not suspicious at all. The belief here is that with the looks of Amber and Boston Rob dominating the season, two of the lesser known all-stars, the producers wanted to break up the duo by intentionally putting Amber on the weaker tribe in hopes of her getting voted out before the merge. And everything seemed to fall into place for the producers as the new Mogo Mogo tribe won immunity, putting Amber in danger. But then... If you can, if you can. Some background here, Rob, Tom, and Lex had a pregame alliance, so this put Lex into quite the dilemma. Take out Amber and try to get Big Tom the flip to Shapiro 3.0's side, or save Amber in hopes of his real life friend Rob protecting him moving forward. In the end, Lex convinced Jeanne and Kathy to save Amber and take out the villainous Jerry, which of course would turn out to be a game and real life friendship ending move for Lex. <laughs> Let me go eat some chocolate. Jerry, the job is spoken. <laughs> Rob was feeling down the entire day as he was positive his future wife would be the boot. So when he saw her face at the reward challenge the next day, he was filled with absolute joy. Shapira, come on in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jerry voted out at the last tribal council. The remaining tribe members, Kathy, Sheanne, Lex, and Amber. Hi guys, hi guys. Hey, Kat. The tribes then merged and the final nine all-stars reunited at the old Savoga camp. Lex approached Rob about their alliance and Rob promised Lex he was safe after he indeed saved Amber. But Rob knew this was a game and wanted to stay strong with Mogo Mogo 3.0 and in fact take out Lex first as he was easily the biggest threat in the minority. He told Amber about this but she was hesitant as she didn't think now was the right time to take out Lex after all he did for them and they should go for an easier target. But Rob was adamant about Lex. Seriously, I think people forget just how ruthless this is. As again, Rob and Amber could have simply brought Kathy and Lex on board to dominate the merge, but Rob wasn't taking any chances with Lex, and he was ready to take him out the second he got his chance, with not an ounce of guilt. At the first individual immunity challenge, Kathy won, sealing Lex's fate. Rob in fact told Lex that Mogo Mogo 3.0 were sticking together, leading to one of the most uncomfortable and real moments in Survivor history. I appreciate everything you did to save Amber, but myself, Amber, Big Tom, Jenna, Alicia, and uh, Rupert. Rupert have agreed to stay together as a group. It was, it was, it was, a, angry about it was a brother coming to another right. brother saying, friend to friend, and you know what? Right. I had my game all worked out, and if, and if I had gotten rid of Amber, do you know what I would have come in here with? I would have come in here with my numbers advantage, and I did that just because you're my friend. It, it's about being betrayed by my friend. Right. It's about getting a knife in the back. Like, honestly, I don't know what you want me to say, Lex. I know, like, I want you to say that you're gonna that you're gonna be true to, to the word you gave. The word I gave you. Make no mistake about it, Lex. Between you and I, and you want to put our friendship on the line, I'll put our friendship on the line over this. The word I gave you was that if I can take care of you, I will. I'm sorry, I cannot. Kathy was so devastated for Lex that she debated on giving up her immunity to him. But at Tribal, she ultimately decided to keep it, as Lex was voted out in a 7-2 vote, arguably the most ruthless vote off in Survivor history. Lex, tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. The challenge taking place in episode 12 would be for reward and immunity, as a team that won reward would get letters from home, and the winner of that group would earn individual immunity. And they were given some motivation before the challenge with some videos from home. And this time, Jenna actually got a video. The team of Rob, Alicia, Amber, and Sheehan won reward, while Boston Rob won his first individual immunity. Kathy's fate was all but sealed, but that didn't stop her from fighting, as she desperately tried to get the numbers to break up Rob and Amber. But in the end, Mogo Mogo 3.0 stuck together, sending Kathy to the jury in a 6-2 vote. Kathy, the tribe has spoken. Sheehan was the last target for Mogo Mogo 3.0 and knew she was in big trouble. The reward challenge was the first installment of the sketchy questions challenge, which as expected, played up to Rob's ego. Alicia received most of the heat here as she was voted least deserving of being an all-star with Sheehan and voted most likely to be under the false assumption that she was smart. Ouch. After this challenge, Alicia was obviously pissed at the results from the sketchy questions while Rupert got drunk on reward. At a must win immunity challenge for Sheehan, she held up her hand the longest, grinding out one of the most clutch wins in Survivor history. With the original Shapiro finally having to turn on each other, Alicia became the easy boot given the sketchy questions challenge and she was sent to the jury in a unanimous vote. Alicia, tribe spoken. 
Episode 14 begins with the family reward challenge, and in a twist, the loved ones would compete in the gross food eating competition as opposed to the players. Tom's son Bo won the challenge, and Tom elected to bring Rob and his brother with them on reward, where they shared pizza and beer. However, Bo would end up breaking the tribe's fishing spear back at camp, leading to these controversial words from Boston Rob. Bo's a bigger dumbass than his dad. I mean, Big Tom's pretty dumb. But Bo is just, he's out there too. Again, if I hadn't made this clear by now, Rob and Tom were real life friends coming into this season. At the immunity challenge, it came down to Tom and Sheehan, and thankfully for the majority, Tom pulled through for the win, sealing Sheehan's fate as she became the fourth member of the jury. Sheehan, tribe spoken. Good luck everyone. It's time for you to go. It's the final five now, and the alliances are clear. Of course, Rob and Amber are a pair, and the original Sabogas of Jenna and Rupert are a pair, leaving Tom in the middle. Rupert and Jenna discuss the possibility of breaking up Rob and Amber, to which Rob overheard, making him paranoid. And after Rob won the final five reward challenge, he was put in an interesting spot, as he was allowed to bring one other person with him on reward. If he chose Amber, this could put the two in the minority, as Jenna and Rupert would have the entire day to persuade Tom. But in the end, Rob wasn't that much of a ruthless game bot in All Stars, and takes Amber with him on reward. And when the two returned, Rob's paranoia got even worse when he saw Rupert and Tom strategizing. So, feeling in danger, Rob won his second immunity. But still, this now made Amber vulnerable to the possible Tom-Rupert-Jenna alliance. And when Rob and Amber talked to Tom about his decision, he pulled a Christie from Amazon, admitting that he could join up with Rupert and Jenna if he wanted to. But at Tribal, Tom stuck to his word with Rob and Amber and voted for Jenna. However, not wanting to put their faith into Tom's hands, Rob and Amber teamed up with their original Final Four alliance and Rupert and Jenna to blindside the swing vote Tom. Big Tom, the tribe has spoken. I heard it. It's time for you to go. Yep. It's the finale now, and this should be good. I mean, after all, All Stars has totally been a fun ride so far, and not a completely dark season that ruined many reputations and friendships. Amber won the Final Four Maze Challenge, securing herself a spot in the Final Three. Rob and Amber made it clear they were voting for Rupert, while Rupert was obviously voting for Rob, leaving Jenna in a tough spot. If she voted out Rupert, she would have to win Final Immunity to make it to the end. However, if she went to Rocks for Rupert, and both of them survived, she would basically be guaranteed a Final Two spot, as more than likely, the two of them would beat Amber in the Final Immunity challenge. Jenna would and Rupert, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Rob, Jenna, and Amber, arguably the three least deserving all-stars, make up the final three, just like everyone imagined. The final immunity challenge returned to the classic hand on an idol endurance challenge, the last time we ever saw this in US Survivor. Jenna would end up being the first one to fall, and after two hours, Rob won his third immunity of the season and used his soul vote to eliminate his non-romantic interest in Jenna Lewis. The 16th person voted out and the final member of our jury. Jenna, you need to bring your torch. Jenna, the tribe has spoken. Rob and Amber reflect on their journey in Survivor, as not only did they dominate a season of All-Stars, but they also fell in love with each other during these 39 days. However, Final Tribal Council wasn't as lovely. Months later, we saw Jeff's heart get broken, as Rob and Amber's arc came to full circle. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. In a 4-3 vote, Amber won Survivor All-Stars, despite Rob obviously playing the better game, but the jury was simply too pissed at him. But hey, he became the legend and got the million dollar girl, so I don't think he's complaining. <laughs>